Hello and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. This is an idea I had a little while ago, but I um, basically to apologise for my Draw My Life video being late, I thought I'd try this out now. Um, this, if you don't know, is a game which is all about controlling your own space agency. You have a certain amount of money, a certain amount of technology which is available to you, and you undertake missions to expand both your money and your technology. And what I thought it, is that this would be a great opportunity to teach a little bit about rocket science and about the history of space flight, which are both topics that I'm really, really into, um, whilst playing the game. Uh, so I've got a campaign which I haven't done anything on, but I've already started down here. And um, I thought that... There we go. I haven't even clicked off of the first tooltip. So I thought that basically we could do a couple of missions uh, and see how this goes. Um, if we go over to the Astronaut Center, you see that I am here. So what I want to do with this playthrough is uh, I want to have my subscribers uh, as my Kerbal Nauts. So all of these people we can rename and uh, we can put them into our spacecraft. So if you would like to be an astronaut, or really a Kerbal Nought, then hit me up, let me know um, if you'd like to be part of this, and um, we, can, we can put you into space. Or possibly you might die in a fiery inferno. I can't guarantee that won't happen. Uh, but let's find out. So the way that this now works... Hello, uh, Gene Kerman. So Gene Kerman is interesting. I think he's named half after Gene Cernan, who was the Apollo 17 astronaut, uh, and also after Gene Krantz, who was the Apollo 13 mission commander, but, sorry, um, mission director. But we'll, more about that later. So what we have to do is we, uh, we can choose two contracts at a time. So this is a pretty easy one. All we have to do is literally launch a vessel, so we can accept that. And let's see if we can, on our first attempt, get to 5,000 meters. And both of these are going to give us rewards down here. We can use those rewards of money, reputation and science to expand what we do. But to build something we need to go to this, the vehicle assembly building. Werner von Kerman is of course Werner von Braun, who was the, uh, uh, the famous originally Nazi, then later American rocket scientist. So this is where a lot of the fun actually of the game happens. So what we have here is our command pod. Now, this is the only command pod we have available to us. As we develop more science, we're going to have more available to us. Uh, and you can see it's, you know, it's got various characteristics. And we have all these different parts here. So we've only got a few at the moment because we haven't got a huge amount of science. But all we need to do is we need to get to 5,000 meters and we need to launch a vessel. So in order to launch a vessel, we need some fuel. If that will have two fuel, because why not? This is literally going to be the most basic rocket. Uh, we're going to have a liquid fueled engine. So that's it. That's literally our first craft. Oh, but that's not really enough because this goes up, then what happens? We need to safely get this back down. So let's put a parachute on this. Now, what you notice on the here, on the right here, this is our stages. So rockets are composed of multiple stages. Um, if you have a very simple rocket, then it is literally just one stage, just light the engine and that's it. But what we want to do is we want to launch this rocket and then we want to get into the atmosphere and then we want to return it safely. And the way we do that is via this parachute. So we make that our second stage. So our first stage is this engine here. We press spacebar, is the, is the key in game, and that fires the engine. We wait for the fuel to run out and then just before we hit the ground, we want to hit this parachute. And that's literally it. Uh, let's make sure that we take Jebediah Kerman out and we're going to put me in. I really hope I don't die. I can't, like I say, I can't guarantee that that won't happen. And we can name our craft. Now the other thing is, I want names for spacecraft. So uh, I'm going to name it the Bootle Bum Trinket. If you get that reference, you are awesome. But uh, as well as having willing subscribers who are going to volunteer to be part of the space program, I also need your spaceship names. So, let's launch it, and hope it doesn't all blow up. Here we go, so this is our launch pad. That's our space centre over there. So, we actually had to be very careful not to damage our space centre, because we have to spend some of our very hard-earned money uh, fixing it, if something does go wrong. So there's me. I can actually go inside the crew capsule here. It's a bit bare, you can't really see much at the moment. And this thing... You also see down here. So this is our, our trackable. 
And this is basically what indicates our our orientation or attitude, as is the uh, the space term for it. So we've got a throttle there on the left. We've got our acceleration on the right, and if it goes into the red, that that's pretty much toast for our Kerbal Nauts, uh, and we have our speed here. So what I'm going to do... Oh, I can't gauge SAS! I literally can do nothing. Okay. So, this could be fun. <laughs> Let's try launching this without anybody who has any piloting knowledge. Three, two, one. There we go! So up here you see we've completed one contract already. And we are flying. Now you can see on the left hand side here we have our fuel gauge. You can actually see we're using this top tank first, and then it eventually we use that left tank. But if you can see at the bottom, we're actually shimmying around a little bit. Interestingly, I'm not sure why, because we uh We don't have any asymmetry in our design. And we just hit 5,000 meters, so we hit both of our objectives, which is good. Let's just see how far up we can go, actually. Thinking about it, I probably had better let us move a little bit to the side. So we don't come crashing right back down on the space center. So there we go, we're out of fuel. And we are... If you look at this gauge at the top here... I'm taking this to be roughly the stratosphere. This is divided into three layers. In the Earth's atmosphere, you could really think of it as lower atmosphere, middle atmosphere, upper atmosphere, space. Um, and to me, stratosphere is really the middle atmosphere. Then above that, you've got the, the thermosphere. Sorry, mesosphere, then the thermosphere. Um, but we're probably going to stop at a height just over 20 kilometers, which is pretty good, I think, for our first attempt. Now, what I can do, actually, I can show you, this is our map mode. This thing is huge, because... This is us. That's our tiny trajectory over our planet. And we're actually going to come down in the sea, which is a little bit annoying, because that means we'll lose some of our parts, because we, we can reclaim parts afterwards. But you can see, that's us. We've just gone over our apoapsis, which is the highest point of an orbit. And we're now coming back down to Earth. Well, Kerbal. Kerbin, sorry. This is basically, the uh, the system here in the game is based on the Earth system, but the Earth is called Kerbin, and the moon is M-U-N, with a normal out. Um, and also Kerbin has two moons rather than just one. But you also have all the other bo planetary bodies, so you have, uh, uh, you have Mars, Venus, Jupiter, you have all of those bodies, just with different names, and they all have moons, um, if they have moons in the real world. And uh, we can go and visit them. So this is us, I can actually speed up time, because this is a little bit boring. And that's me looking a bit panicked. And now you'll notice that we're slowing down, because that's the effect of atmospheric drag, because we're in the lower part of the atmosphere now. We're at height just a couple of kilometres. When we hit two kilometres, I'll deploy our parachute. So if I zoom out, you can see that better. And there we go. So we're going to touch down the ocean. Now, now ocean touchdowns are... Um, Something the Americans do, but the, uh, the, the Soviet space uh, agency didn't in the, in the middle of the space race. Um, I'm not entirely sure why, because land touchdowns, I suppose, are easier to get to, because you have to send a recovery vehicle out and make sure everybody's all right. Whereas ocean touchdowns, the ocean is a bit more forgiving than landing on you know hard ground. But look at me! I survived my flight. I don't look too happy about it. And I can't see much either. That's probably why I'm not very happy. What we can do... Is uh, one of the things about this game is in order to unlock parts, you need science. So we can get science by performing science actions. And an example of that is doing a crew report. So that's my report. I like the look of the sea. So we'll keep that data and we'll recover that. And we are about to touch down. So there you go. Unfortunately, we've lost the uh, parts below the crew capsule, which is a little bit annoying. But if we recover the vessel, there we go. So we've got this much science, 13 in total. We recovered some of the parts. And I got some experience, which is all pretty good. Now, that's science then. If we go to our research and development centre, which is here, we have a tech tree. Uh, and these are the parts that we had when we started off with. And what I can do is I can use this science, which we've earned to unlock these parts. So these are more fuel containers, uh, a bit of science, and a stack decoupler, which is very important if we want to try and make uh, bigger rockets, because I'll explain about multi-stage rockets in, uh, in the next part. 
um, but they are very important in order to get out of the atmosphere. So, if we research that, we now have those parts, and we can... We only have eight science left. So we don't actually have enough to research these topics. So, what I want from you guys, then, is... I, I need quite a few things in the comment section. I need you guys to volunteer yourselves in the name of Kerbal Science and volunteer as Kerbal Nauts. I need ship names, and I also need some directions. So I need you guys to recommend what we should do. So whether we should... Um, what technologies we should go for, what missions we should go for... Um, there's not too much choice on the technology front. But in terms of uh, missions, we actually have quite a lot to choose from. So we have these slightly more uh, ambitious ones at the moment, considering the parts we have, like escaping the atmosphere and orbiting Kerbin. But we can test stack decouplers, mm -hmm. solid mm -hmm. rocket boosters, parachutes, visual survey. These are quite cool. So this is literally just flying to a location and, um, and doing it. And you get quite a lot of money from doing that. But I want you guys to choose. So this is the only episode that I'm going to be recording in this session. Normally what I'll probably do is I'll record three, probably, 10 to 15 minute episodes in a sitting. But uh, because this is the first one, I need lots of Kerbal Not Volunteers, and I need lots of direction, and I need lots of input from you guys, so I know what to do next. So that's it from me for the time being. Let me know what you think about this concept as well. If you think it's a terrible idea, then do tell me in the comments. But um, I, if you... The music stopped. I'm not entirely sure why the music stopped. There we go, we can have a look at the tracking station whilst we're here. We've got all of this to explore, we've got all the space. Shall I zoom out, actually? That's Kerbin. Then we've got the moon. We've got the second moon. Let's zoom out even further. We've got all these other planets as well, and all their orbits. So we've got lots and lots to do, and I need your help to decide what we are going to do. So, leave your feedback in the comments, volunteer yourselves for science, give me some direction, and um, hopefully I'll be doing another episode in just a couple of days' time, because this is really, really easy to do. Um, so hopefully we can get this series off, off the ground. Way Terrible pun. Uh, really quickly. So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I look forward to reading your suggestions in the comments.